Church of St. Michael and All Angels in Inverness for our Mass on this Sunday before Lent. Our Gospel this morning is the account of the Transfiguration from Mark's Gospel, that point in Jesus' ministry where he moves from his ministry in Galilee to set his face towards Jerusalem. And of course, this week we will come to uh, Ash Wednesday and begin our journey through Lent to Holy Week. And I welcome you all who join this Mass online and that we as a dispersed community of God's people are aware of each other's presence as we offer our prayers and our praise as we welcome Christ within us where we are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mysteries of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, 
Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading in the second book of Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on by crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. A reading in the second letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we, don't, for we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus Christ. For it is the God who said, let, sh let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts 
to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. O day of rest and gladness, O day of joy and light, O balm of care and sadness, most beautiful, most bright, on thee the high and lowly, through ages joined in praise, sing holy, 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 this hymn to God we raise. On thee at the creation, the light first had its birth, on thee for Christ rose from depths of earth. On thee, our Lord, victorious, the Spirit sent from heaven. And thus on thee, most glorious, a triple light was given. New graces ever gaining from this our day of rest, we reach the rest remaining in spirits of the blessed. To Holy Ghost be praises, to Father and to Son, the church her voice abraces, to thee bless me in one. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Ponder my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading in the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, in the ninth chapter, beginning at the second verse. Glory, Glory to, to Christ, Christ our Saviour. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them and there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Today, the 14th of February, as I'm sure you're aware, is St. Valentine's Day, a day for declaring your love. St. Valentine himself was a third century priest and physician in Rome. He tended to the needs of persecuted Christians, both medically and spiritually. He himself was eventually arrested and executed. But at an earlier date, when he was himself under house arrest, the judge, Asterius, set him a test. He asked him to heal his daughter's blindness. Valentine did that, bringing about the conversion of the judge and his family and his household, as well as bringing about his own release at the time. But eventually, on the day of his execution, Valentine sent a note to the judge's daughter, and he signed it, Your Valentine. These days, one might still sign a card with, for a gift of roses with the words, Your Valentine. When it is to your wife or your husband or your partner, of course, it's no secret. But in my teenage years at school, the habit was that you might receive a card or a note via some intermediary with coded messages on the outside of the envelope and inside some card or note that was just signed, your Valentine. And maybe you hoped that it was from the person that you had sent a note to through some intermediary. And then, of course, you had to find each other, to see each other, to know that it was between the two of you that these important symbols had been exchanged, symbols that said you love one another. Today is also the Sunday before the beginning of Lent, when we begin our journey to Holy Week and Easter, which is also a journey of love, and the journey of seeing that we are loved. In the account of the ascension of Elijah, his disciple Elisha is persistent in accompanying Elijah on every stage of his journey. It's an indication of that love the disciple has for the Master, a longing to know the Master as fully and as deeply as possible in order to be like him, indeed to be able to do more than the Master does, to be more committed in order to show how faithful the disciple that one is. It's a kind of loving that requires a level of absolute attention and presence so that nothing is missed. To see everything in order to understand everything that the Master is doing. And of course, Elisha feels absolutely bereft at the loss of his master Elijah. He could no longer see him. And how could he carry on? How could he learn the things that he thought he didn't know yet? And he tears his own clothes in pieces in a kind of angry sadness. But there is a gift that Elijah has left. There before him is the mantle which Elijah had worn, the mantle with which Elijah had separated the waters of the Jordan. And Elisha will take up the mantle of Elijah, the mantle he'd used to separate the waters, and Elisha will find that he is able to wear it. And it's only now that Elijah is not present that Elisha can take that mantle and wear it. He sees and understands that the physical mantle, this gift, 
is a sign of the mantle of prophecy which he will carry on, a sign entrusted to him by Elijah, a sign entrusted, a gift entrusted to him by God in love. And our reading from St Mark's Gospel takes us to the scene of Jesus' transfiguration, where Peter and James and John are witnesses to Jesus' glory as he appears in the presence of Moses and Elijah. It is for the disciples a vision of heavenly glory. This event comes just after the episode where Jesus had asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? To which they answer, Some say one of the prophets, meaning Moses or Elijah. And Peter eventually declares, You are the Christ. And Jesus begins to teach them about the way in which the Christ, the Messiah, must suffer and rise again. And here on the mountain, they witness Jesus in the presence of Moses and Elijah. And they understand that he cannot be either of them, that he is one with greater glory. And they hear the divine voice that says, this is my son, the beloved. The beloved, the one I loved, the one who is to be loved. And Jesus orders them not to tell anyone what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. And they wonder what that means. Perhaps what it means is that this vision of the transfigured Jesus will mean nothing to anyone, even the disciples, until something more is seen, something more is understood. That it's only in the light of the cross and the resurrection that the disciples will fully understand the meaning of the title, the Beloved, the one loved by the Father and who is to be loved by all because he has shown the extent of his love for all through the cross and the resurrection. The glory of the transfiguration can only be understood when that glory takes on the suffering of the world through the cross. And it's only after Jesus' worldly presence is taken from them that the disciples can take up the mantle of the work that Jesus has given them to do. As Elijah left his mantle for Elisha, for him to wear and be like the master, so Jesus leaves a gift, the gift of himself in the bread and wine of the Eucharist, a gift that expresses the mantle of his infinite love that his disciples are to share. And then we hear Paul's words as he writes to the Christians in Corinth. Words that sound like sad frustration as he speaks of the way in which some people are blinded to the message of the gospel. Unable to see the light of the message of God's love because they cannot see, they cannot love beyond the limitations of the false glory and attractions of worldly things. We can't see through to the true glory of Jesus, who is the image of God. Just as Elisha experienced the brightness of fire as Elijah ascended, the disciples had seen the vision of the glory brighter than anything earth might produce on the mountain of transfiguration. So Paul says, there is a light that overcomes any darkness. God gives the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The face of Jesus, 
that looks with love has been unveiled first on the mountain of transfiguration, then even more fully through his death and resurrection, but most fully of all in the gift of himself in the bread and wine of the sacrament. So on this Sunday before Lent, during a time when churches are closed and we cannot meet together, we cannot together come to the altar to receive the sacrament physically, we can, even through our screens, come before the altar. We can, through our screens, gaze on the sacraments, to the gifts that raise our eyes and our minds beyond the things of this world to think on the one who has given them. With Jesus, we can look towards Jerusalem as we begin that journey on Ash Wednesday through Lent to the events of Holy Week. But equally, we can look back in the light of the resurrection with Peter and James and John and together with Paul at these same events and see them, understand them as a message of love, a message of God's glorious love, a message not signed by some anonymous valentine, but a gift that has the signature of the Beloved. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate as the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he arose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We offer our prayers to God who made himself known in Jesus Christ and made his glory be seen in the face of the transfigured Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church for all you hold in love and who know you through the grace of your sacraments. We pray for a renewal of faith in this land and across the world. We pray for the life and witness of this congregation, for Bishop Mark and the clergy and people of this diocese. And at this time when churches are closed, we pray that your people will remain constant in faith and prayer as we await the time when we can again meet together to receive your sacramental grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you showed your glory in the transfigured face of Jesus. We pray for our disfigured world and for your spirit to be in those who work for the healing of the nations. 
that there may be peace between the nations and between neighbors, that people will seek the things which hold them together rather than keep them apart. to the ways of righteousness and justice. We pray for those in positions of government locally and nationally, for those in Westminster and Holyrood in our own country, that your spirit of wisdom will guide them in all their decision-making for the good of the people they serve. Lord, in your mercy, Pray for all who suffer in the world, that they may know your power of healing and of new life. For those who suffer at the hands of persecutors, for those who suffer because of natural disaster, for those who have suffered and continue to suffer as a result of this pandemic, for those we know who have asked our prayers, Al McRae, Jean McLean, Marion Cuthbert, Anne McLennan, Anne Wignall, Mary Mulligan, Elsa Redmond, Michael Manson, Heather Cuthbert, Julia Sinclair, and Father Gerald. We pray for those who work to bring healing and wholeness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, the disciples of Jesus glimpsed the glory of heaven on the Mount of Transfiguration. We pray for those whose memories we cherish, who have died, that they and we with them may come to that place of glory and see you face to face. We commend to your keeping those recently departed, David Donaldson and Ronald MacDonald. We remember in faith those of this congregation whose years minds at this time. Arthur Gatteridge, Catherine Patterson, Jane Fraser, Alice Craig, Jesse Fraser, Jemima Joyce Skinner, Eliza Sesford, Alistair Christie. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, accept these and all our prayers, which we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Oh, 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become the cup of our salvation. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us, that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son born in human flesh. He is the Word, existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power you raised him from the dead, he broke the bonds of evil, and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, Having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, 
and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last, in your new creation, we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. We do not presume to come to this your holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his most sacred body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. As we come before the sacrament of the altar. Although we cannot receive the sacrament physically, we pray that we will receive Christ to ourselves where we are as we offer our prayers of adoration. Come, Lord Jesus, in the fullness of your grace and dwell in the hearts of us, your servants, that, adoring you in faith, we may receive you and with joy and thanksgiving Abide in you, our guide, our bread of pilgrims, our companion on the way. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Father, your steadfast purpose is the completion of all things in your Son. May we who have received the pledges of the kingdom live by faith, walk in hope, 
and be renewed in love until the world reflects your glory and you are all in all through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. When Jesus led his chosen three to leave the shadow from their sight and on the mountain let them see his face transfigured, crowned with light, what grace that day to them was give. To men on earth a glimpse of them. Their Moses and Elijah stood and spoke about his exodus, their freedom purchased by his blood, a Passover fulfilled for us. The law and prophets meet the Lord. See God revealed and man restored. Then from the cloud there came a voice, This is my own beloved Son, The Scripture's theme, the Father's choice, The Master stood supreme alone. They saw his glory and they heard the one eternal living word. So may we see and know his grace, the truth which like a burning light illuminates the darkest place till Christ himself shall end the night. When to his people's longing eyes, God's days shall dawn, his sun shall rise. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. O glorious Archangel Michael, chief and commander of the heavenly hosts, guardian of souls, vanquisher of evil, servant in the house of the divine king and our glorious patron who shines with excellence and superhuman virtue deliver us from all evil and enable us by your gracious protection to serve god more faithfully day by day through jesus christ our lord amen the lord be with you and also with you let us bless the lord thanks be to god May the divine assistance remain with us always, and may the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.